I'd like to introduce myself. I am Dr. Yasser Farhat. I'm professor of urology. Uh, I am uh, from Egypt, but uh, I am working uh, as a consultant uh, in the urology in uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, during the last 10 years. Uh, and I am uh, chairing the Arab School of Urology and acting Secretary General of the Arab Association of Urology. Uh, it's a great honor for me today to moderate uh, this uh, webinar and uh, to be with the two distinguished speakers. Uh, our agenda today, it will be uh, two talks. Uh, one about the clinical application of flexible urethroscopy by Dr. Lee John. Uh, and the second talk will be uh, about the advantages of disposable flexible urethroscopy by Dr. Mohammed al Ghannam. Uh, before introducing our uh, guest speakers, uh, I'd like to, to uh, uh, give appreciation to POSIN uh, company. Uh, POSIN Medical actually, uh, not only for hosting this webinar, but uh, honestly due to their uh, uh, vision and their uh, international uh, role in education and the training. Uh, they playing an important role all over the world. Uh, we feel that significantly in the Middle East during the last few years, they are supporting the young urologists in uh, providing them uh, the updated knowledge, the helping them to improve their skills. What's interesting also uh, with uh, POSIN Medical, they uh, working uh, uh, strongly to build uh, uh, international relationship and exchange of experience. And today it's a, a, a clear example of sharing two distinguished speakers, Dr. Lee John from China and Dr. Mohammed Al Ghanam from Kuwait. So it's a clear example of how the exchange of experience and the skills between different regions all over the world. So thank you to Pozen, uh, uh, all the team that's working, uh, 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 dedicated uh, uh, activity and uh, 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 strong partnership. So I will not uh, take long time. Uh, actually, I just want to announce that uh, everyone should keep his mic muted or maybe the host is muting the, the, the mic of all participants. And if you have any questions, please, post it on the chat box. I will uh, frequently uh, look at the chat box and I will try to uh, uh, share the questions to uh, our speakers uh, after each talk. Uh, uh, it's my honor to introduce uh, Dr. Lee John, which is a consultant urologist from uh, Beijing uh, Friendship Hospital China. I believe that most of you know him. He is a, a, a youth committee of a Chinese urological association. He is also associate director of pediatric group, uh, uh, sub uh, subordinated to a Chinese urological association and director of urolithiasis group, uh, subordinated to Chinese uh, urological uh, association youth committee. And uh, he is a youth committee of a Chinese urological doctor association so he has a long experience in, in, in the field of in urology, especially flexible urethroscopy. Uh, I believe uh, all of us will enjoy having his lecture. Uh, personally, I believe that I will learn a lot from him, from his experience. So uh, welcome Dr. Lee to start your uh, uh, lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yasser. Uh, so, thank you, Dr. Yes, and uh, also hello, everybody. Today, my topic will be uh, clinical application of single use and digital flexible urethroscopy. I, I know this is very common all around the world, but uh, actually, I can see uh, till now we, uh, we can use this uh, within China now. 
because uh, the registration way is very, very long in China. But now all around the world, same. We can also use this um, interesting scopes for lethal Uh Yes, uh, stone disease is very common in our clinical practice. We will face um, many, many stones per day. Last year, in my uh, center, we finished 2,000.9 cases. And uh, uh, in group this, uh, we finished uh, more than 700 flexible rotoscope operation. Uh, we use uh, reusable and also single use, but now we can use uh, single use digital scopes for the lethal trypsin. So all these patients will benefit from the new instrument. So uh, which kind of disease is suitable for FUS? So first let's see the guideline. Uh, this is uh, EU guideline 2017. Uh, it is said if stone more than two centimeter, the first choice is PCN, of course. In my center, we, we do this. Uh, we do a PCL like this. And if stone less than two centimeter, you can choose endology or ESWL. But uh, if less than two centimeters, I would rather choose uh, RIS. So the same for pediatric. Uh, because we are one of the largest pediatric stone treatment center in China, so we both treat children and adults. But if stone larger than two centimeters, no matter children and adults, we will choose uh, PCL. But if less, uh, we will choose uh, flexible scope. So uh, here, uh, Professor Asa will ask uh, the audience some questions. So the question one in everybody, uh, so well, this is for the audience. In your clinic practice, what size of stone uh, you will choose uh, if you guys? It means uh, stone size for flexible scope. So can we Jump the post question for the audience. Actually, actually, we prepared the uh, questions, but uh, no, maybe it doesn't work. But, uh, but, but you, you, you can do. Uh, actually, Professor Lee, maybe uh, the pull uh, technique is not uh, working mm -hmm. properly, so. Uh, uh, so you can just share with us your experience. Actually, I can tell you in, in our center, we are putting the limit for two centimeter is the standard to go for flexible urethroscopy. If you can tell me your experience or the policy in your hospital. Uh, for me, uh, if less than two centimeter, uh, we will choose, if need uh, treat, we will choose the uh, FUS technique. So uh, let's continue. Yeah. Uh, here is indication, actually indication in our center. If stone size uh, around 1.0 centimeters and also yes, WR and I'm manageable, I think that's best uh, choose for the endoscopy technique. And also for some special patient, for example, abnormal of the kidney and uh, also obesity and uh, deformity of spine and the pregnant, and also only one kidney, solitary kidney, and uh, also combined with PCL. So for these patients, we will also choose um, flexoscope urethoscopy first. And uh, here is the contraindication. I think uh, uh, hemorrhage and the uh, anticoagulation is the contraindication for any kind of endology. And uh, also, if the patient can't uh, be performed general anesthesia, that means um, we can't perform flexible endoscopy because in my center, if we choose FUS, we must choose general anesthesia. And the infection, this is most important. If 
without uh, proper treat, uh, I think that will cause very serious complications of the operation and the stricture. If combined with stricture, uh, no matter how large is the stone, I will choose the PCL instead. Uh, so uh, the last one, I don't think it's very important. Before we can use single use the scope, we will save the reusable scope. Uh, we will protect the scope. So normally we, 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 we don't choose the uh, IPA angle so small, the, the patient if it's so small IPA angle. But now we have single use scope. I, I think this is, this doesn't matter. And uh, so uh, in my experience, if the stone looks slim and single, if the uh, stone located in middle or upper part, and if the stone with mild hydronephrosis, if the stone is fragile, that means uh, CT density is less than 1,000. I think this is the best choice for FUIs. Uh, so why this mild hydronephrosis? If this uh, severe hydronephrosis, I think it's this contraindication. But if no hydronephrosis, that means nowhere, no space for the deflection. Mm, also will be uh, difficult for the control of the scope. So if stone with mild hydronephrosis, that will be better. Uh, so this is our clinical routine. We will prepare each patient carefully. Uh, normally we will give antibiotics before operation. Uh, we can give intravenous and also oral take. That depends on you uh, clin clinical routine. Uh, and also we will perform urine routine test and uh, culture, both. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, I will uh, I will see the nitrate. If the nitrate is positive, I think this is contraindication for FUS, uh, even for PCL. So if this positive nitrate before operation, we will give the patient the full dose of antibiotics, waiting un until the nitrate becomes negative. And also we will give both KOB scan and uh, CT for the patient. Also the patient, uh, the operation should be performed under general anesthesia. No other choice, only a general anesthesia. Uh, this is the second thing, pardalation. Uh, each time when I communicate with other doctors, they will uh, ask me, the pardalation rate in my center, I, I, I will say 100%. In my center, if we choose uh, FUS for the patient, I think no matter uh, how ureter condition is, we will in the well double stent two weeks before operation. So till now, we never injure any ureter. So I, I think if you enter the ureters, cause structure, maybe this will be a uh, very bad thing. And uh, so here now, because we present 100%, so we injure nothing. Uh, so uh, we can see uh, the first and the second will be okay. So some doctor will ask me if, if the double distance can't uh, go through the stone, so we will you still individual the still will you still keep the double descent? I will say if result like this, I will keep the double descent just in position. Also, it can punish, uh, it, it can dilate the ureter for us. And also drainage. Uh everybody will uh, so I, I think uh, everybody will use the sheaths, access sheaths for drainage of the pelvis. But uh, most doctors will neglect the bladder. So 
at uh, the beginning of your career, I, I suggest that you put both uh, further characters and uh, the access sheets. So further faster opportunity of the bladder. But if you can finish the operation within one hour, I think you can neglect the bladder caster. Only the pelvis, that's okay. Uh, so this is uh, the other uh, routine in our center, uh, the position. Normally we will choose the listotomy position. You can see both child and adult, that's okay. If only for FUS procedure, I think uh, the only lysotomy position will be okay. But if for ethers, for combined use of flexible and uh, radioscopy, we will choose, uh, we, we call this running position. Uh, it, it means uh, lysotomy uh, lower part, but upper part to waste. So we can touch both the kidney and the, the ureter of the patient. So two, you can see two operators can work together. But actually I like this position better. Uh, this is the prone position, but with separate legs. If we use this position, we can touch both kidneys by Rito, that means IRS can reach both kidney. And also we can puncture both kidney with anti So if we will treat uh, bilateral both side stone within one operation, and if the stone is complex, I will choose prone position with separate legs. So uh, we can uh, perform both side PCL and both side peripheral uh, And this is the uh, structure uh, and also direction. Uh, in China, actually, very, very few urologists will use fluoroscopy during operation because we are afraid of X-ray. So uh, uh, this is different, but uh, uh, if we use fluoroscopy for help, we can easily find the right calyces. This is a very simple case, and this a little bit difficult. Uh, a, a little bit uh, difficult. I think this is most difficult. But if with the help of fluoroscopy, uh, uh, I think you can reach the right calyces. But if you know the calyces, the structure, well, uh, I think you can also neglect the fluoroscopy. So this is uh, my experience. So the first case is very simple, upper and the lower calyces, and also to middle, very clear. And the, the second, third is a little bit difficult because the middle calyces is hide within lower or within upper. So you must find out the middle calyces because you can easily find out upper. Then no deflection, insert the scope. Normally you will insert the scope inside the upper. No other calyces. So if you deflect the scope uh, to maximum degree, normally there'll be lower. So you must find out where the middle case is located. But the fourth and fifth is very difficult because the middle one, middle case is high inside both upper and the lower cases. So uh, I think uh, uh, these five uh, pictures include every kind of situation you, you will face. Uh, so remember, uh, find out the middle, the right middle calyces. You will find out each calyces. Um, normally, e, uh, within your scope, you uh, uh, totally you will find uh, you will see more than eight, even ten small calyces. Not only three, one, two, three. That's not enough. 
So uh, I will talk about the instrument because without instrument, we can do nothing now. So before single use one come to reality, uh, we can only use reusable. So everybody knows reusable is uh, easy damage. And uh, if for optic one, low resolution, and uh, because we sterilize times and times, so will cause cross infection. And also we need a lot of money for repairing, for reprocessing and the maintenance. So this is something for money. But uh, actually we want the scope become first uh, easily controlled. And uh, of course you user friendly. And also will cause no cross factor infection and uh, even we want the scope durable and uh, also we want cheap one. Uh, so what can we get? Of course, finally, that must be single use and uh, digital scopes. Because if we use the uh, optic fiber that will cause a lot of money. So if we use the uh, CMOS inside, that will be very cheap, but the view is quite clear. So you can see this is uh, under the Poulsen scope. The views come from Poulsen scope. Okay. And uh, also from a test, uh, we can see the total satisfaction is very good for Poulsen scope compared with uh, reusable digital. Of course, better than reusable optic one. So, uh, now we with uh, we, we we no because we use a single use digital scope so we get no cross infection we don't need sterilization and uh, we don't need repair the damaged scopes and also cheap and uh, user friendly because it is very light compared with the uh, traditional scope so also. We will talk about the accessory. Uh, in my center, we will choose the uh, hydrophilic dead wire instead of zebra. Because zebra will penetrate the mucosa and even penetrate the ureter and will lead the accessories and the scope out of the ureter and will cause very serious complication. So uh, I suggest you choose the hydrophilic at wire. So now the second question, uh, in your clinical practice, how frequent you use safety at wire? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we, uh, in some cases we use safety at wire, but this, this may be the Chinese routine. Um, actually, not quite often. In my center, I think even less than ten percent. Um, but I know, uh, I know when you start your FUS, uh, um, uh, when you start learning FUS technique, I suggest you use fluoroscopy and also use safety and wear. It will keep the ureter straight, and uh, also if something happens, still you can control the whole ureter. So this is my, my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Li, uh, let me to share with you the suggestions from our participant. They are uh, in the chat box. Uh, I felt that majority of them say that uh, choice B, which is only with difficult cases. So are you keeping the this uh, criteria for difficult cases to, to use safety guidelines, well. and what's the criteria of difficult cases, in yes, your opinion? Uh, I, I think uh, this is same as me. So in my Not center, we, mm -hmm. we, we only keep safety guidelines for the uh, very difficult case. Normally, the the the, the uh, it will be uh, narrow of the ureter or zigzag. <laughs> of the ureter. If the okay. ureter can't be straight for the uh, access sheets, we will yeah. keep 
So if you feel that the ureter is relatively narrow or there is a kink in the ureter, so mm -hmm. you can uh, prefer to put a safety guide wire. Yes, yes, yes. And also, if the drainage is not quite good, sure. the drainage, yeah. uh, something, uh, the, uh, okay. because we uh, normally yeah. the access trees can't reach inside the pathways. So there will be a uh, few centimeters apart from the top of the sheets to the pelvis. Some, 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 sometimes uh, the uh, ureter will hold the skull and the drainage is not quite good. So for such case, we will also keep the safety guide wheel. Um, because with the, both the skull and the guide wheel, it, it, it can make way for the water come out. So okay, it's a, a very good trick that you, uh, actually it's nice to hear that from you, that presence of the safety wire can help in the drainage uh, mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the kidney. This is a good trick. Yes. Thank you. Because uh, for yeah. such case, uh, for such patient, actually the ureter is not narrow, but um, maybe Mm, I don't know, maybe the tension is high and uh, it will hold, uh, your, it'll hold the skull. So now we will use the get the wear. Okay, thank you. Uh, now it's accessories. Uh, uh, actually, in my center, because next picture will be questioned. Uh, here, I, I, will, I will talk about my routine. In my center, we use access trees 100% for drainage. And uh, for some uh, patient, if the ureter condition is very good, it means uh, the, the diameter is uh, quite large and uh, also um, waste, waste infection. And uh, uh, if the stone is relatively large, I will use the 14 French inside access sheets, that will be very strong. And also we can use the uh, certain French inside. Uh, so if for a uh, normal patient, I will choose 12 French inside. So here is uh, the third question. So I think it's interesting to, to listen to our uh, participant if they are uh, doing as in your hospital, uh, utilizing access sheets in every case or yes. Maybe some are not using, never, it can go directly, or some people in between, they use it based on uh, uh, frequently or sometimes. So, so I got some people agree with you uh, that they use it in every case. Uh, and some can use it frequently. So I believe that uh, majority of us in the favor of the access sheets. I think there are a lot of advantages of using access sheets uh, properly. Yes? So, uh, uh, in my opinion, okay. uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. So, so uh, I can hear. So I think Dr. Lee, uh, mm -hmm. something in his... Sorry, I, I, I can't hear now. Uh, sorry, Doctor. Doctor, yes. So let let's keep waiting for Doctor Yas. So maybe something wrong with with his computer. So, uh, in my opinion, I I I think. <laughs> Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, I am back. I'm sorry. I just disconnected for a while. Uh -huh. So I think all of us agree that the importance of the access sheet and it has a lot of advantages that you allow you to go several times safely. Mm -hmm. You are protecting mm -hmm. the wall of the ureter, decreasing the, the pressure inside the kidney, uh, yes. help to reduce the irrigation. So it's your advice is very clear to everyone, especially those are starting to, to utilize the flexible scope to keep uh, access sheets 
will help anyone to, to, to improve his skills and get better results. Uh, actually, uh, no, I have finished thousands of cases, but uh, still, yeah. I ever use a test case for every patient. So, uh, in my opinion, two things are very important. One is infection. One is injury of the ureter. So, if you can avoid infection and uh, injury of the ureter, that means uh, you, uh, um, that means, uh, <laughs> You will be safe. <laughs> I, I, I will be safe because the you know the relationship between patient and the doctor is not quite good here. So first, we must obey the rules. We must follow the guidelines. So, in my opinion, I will protect infection with accessories, and also I will protect the ureter with protection. So this is only my 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 opinion. And also the basket. I think the basket is very important for HUS because you will like some uh, large fragment inside the pelvis. You have to take them out. And uh, in, for some case, maybe you will perform stone analysis after operation. So basket is a very important and only instrument for uh, flexible ureteroscope. And also stents, uh, there will be the fourth question after this, this picture. Uh, for me, uh, in my center, we will individual stent 100% after flexible uteroscopy. So this is the question. Uh, in about this clinical practice, how frequency post US DG stent will individual uh, so for me, uh, 100% also. <laughs> okay, so we start to get some answers. So some agree with you to go for uh, all cases and some saying with the special cases, so not in every case. So maybe if they have a feeling that it's a large stone or he feel that maybe some residual fragments of significant size that can be difficult to be uh, cleared or he has some injury to the mucosa, so he is worried about the, the sequences of that. So uh, I feel that everyone is going to option A or B, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't see anyone who is not stenting his patient after yeah. uh, flexible ultrasound. But let me to yeah. here highlight one thing that uh, if you do stenting for 100% of the patient pre-stenting, and yeah. then you do flexible ureteroscopy, yeah. and sometimes you go for stone relatively large, which is two centimeter. No, if uh, if larger than two, I will choose this now. Uh, what is the maximum that you you prefer not to exceed? Uh, for FUS maximum. Yeah, uh, less than two centimeter. Less than two centimeters. Yeah. So that it means it may need sometimes two sessions. And then you will put a stent and you will remove the, the stent. So yes, yes. Uh, it's long procedure relatively and it maybe it's added cost to, to, to the patients. Yes. Uh, so I think when we have to, uh, if you will go to the, some uh, literature that uh, stenting Pre-stenting is not mandatory. You have to to select the cases that you need to stent, and both the stenting also is mm, we have to define which case that we need to stent, and maybe some cases no need to stent, because at the end we need to shorten the the, the journey of treating our patients. It can be uh, four sessions or three sessions. Uh, including insertion of double J, removal of double J, and uh, reducing the cost. Because with the recent laser, if you are going for dusting, uh, you are confident that you are uh, uh, have no significant residual, and you stayed short time inside the ureter, and access was easy, and no 
signs of trauma. So I think putting a rotary catheter or something for 24 hours can be enough. Yes, so, yes, I, I, I use this. Uh, uh, actually, I use such technique in pediatric case. Okay. Uh, 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 if for adults, uh, we will uh, perform standing and the uh, stand with general anesthesia. That's okay. Uh, but if it's child, no, only general anesthesia for anything. So uh, if with uh, endology uh, uh, treatment for the pediatric, especially for infant, we will insert a catheter first, and then uh, normally we will choose the macro PCL technique, and then we will keep the catheter only for 24 hours and then 12. So one operation for everything. But see for adults, uh, actually, I will perform operation like this. First, outpatient operation for spending. And then uh, maybe uh, day surgery, maybe two or three days, uh, stay in hospital for the lithotripsy. And then uh, outpatient operations for the blood of the stent. So okay, before thank you. each patient, I, I, I will talk about this carefully for the patient. Uh, so I will continue. And also laser. If for uh, a faster operation, I suggest high power instead of low power, we can uh, use a high frequency technique for smash the stones and also if we can smash the stone, maybe uh, for some case, we don't need stand after operation. So I will try later. Uh, complications, uh, nobody will see such things, but uh, we, we must know such things. First, uh, it's very bad things. If you see the whole ureter come out from the patient, I, I think it's a disaster. So we must avoid this happen. So I think percent may be very important for protection of the ureter. The second thing, the second thing is extraction. Uh, if with very high pressure during operation, uh, for high pressure irrigation, uh, in some case, you will cause starvation, but not quite serious complication. Just waiting and give full dose of antibiotics. Normally, they were absorbed by the patient itself. And also, hematoma, I think this is very serious complication. Um, in my opinion, if hematoma like this, we will stay, we will watch for waiting for one month around, and then we will puncture the hematoma and the drainage hematoma. If you don't do this, maybe will cause the future atrophy of the kidney. But if bleeding like this, uh, I think this may be very serious. Maybe you will incise, you will remove the kidney because you can't stop the bleeding. And also stain stress. Uh, when you treat large stones with FUIs, uh, you will often cause stain stress. But now, uh, because we uh, only treat stone less than two centimeters with FUIs, so very few cases will uh, look like this. And the stain stress risk in, in my center, it's not very high. But if it happened, uh, I suggest you uh, drainage the kidney immediately. If stent stress combined with infection, never choose ritual technique. Only, uh, only puncture the kidney and then left the nephro tube and then drainage the kidney. Never choose ureter scope for clear of the stent stress that will cause very serious infection. And infection. Infection, uh, 
I think will never disappear. Uh, it will come with us uh, always. But if you give the patient careful check uh, before operation and also enough training during operation and uh, also in uh, enough antibiotics, I think the infection rate is not very high. In my center, uh, we, we have some after operation favor, but uh, uh, for septic show, um, for example, last year, we finished 2009 cases, less than 10 septic shocks last year. So uh, if you carefully treat the patient, I think the septic shock rate is not very high. And so this, uh, the routine for uh, the FUS, especially for the single use the digital instrument in my center, I think uh, this is uh, suitable for uh, Beijing Friendship Hospital, maybe uh, very common use the, within China, but maybe different country has different opinions and different techniques. Uh, we should communicate and we should learn from each other. So that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Li. Uh, Uh, actually, uh, I uh, I enjoyed the, the lecture and I uh, I learned a lot from your uh, huge experience with thousands of cases. So uh, we have five minutes for our participants. So anyone has uh, a question, he can uh, post it in the uh, uh, chat box, and we will try to to answer him. Uh, so. Uh, till we have questions, I'd like to share with you your experience. You know, even in the guidelines and when we talk about the spoon size or the limits, uh, we usually talk about one dimension of the spoon. Yes. However, the spoon is not that simple, uh, one or two dimension. Yes. Many studies now talking about the volume of the spoon or spoon burden to help you to decide at which technique you are, or which modality you are planning to, to treat. So do you have any experience about the stone burden or stone volume in helping decision making? Uh, yes, uh, there are one study uh, conducted in my center. Uh, yes, some knowledge aside, we, 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 we should uh, uh, measure the stone burden. That means uh, three dimension and uh, together, and uh, so it can it can it can tell you the stone uh, how heavy the stone is. But uh, we um, we have uh, uh, our techniques for the measure of the stone. We call the stone mass. Maybe uh, we already have some papers. That means stone burden multiple ways stone density. Yeah. So that will give you the result, not only the stone size and also the stone density. Uh, for example, if the stone is uh, 300 uh, calcium oxalaria, although the stone size is very large, but fragile, and you can easily smash the stone with size. But if more than 100, it will be very difficult. So when you multiply the stone burden with stone density together, it will give you more accurate. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Actually, I have a question about the price of the single use from Bosin, but I think neither me or you have answer for this question. Another question is important: What's the duration of uh, stent post-operative? How many days you keep the stent post-operative? Uh, that depends on how many uh, fragments I left inside the collection system. If no fragment, normally one, two weeks, just pull out the stent. If we left a lot of uh, fragments, I will check the patient one uh, month after operation. If no stone left, pull out. If still some left, 
um, it depends on the size. If very small fragment, also for our the then if large, I will uh, maybe choose the second operation or let the patient waiting for another month and then recheck. Uh, we have an interesting question and we need your experience to explain. You know, lower calyx stone is usually challenging stone to deal with flexible ultroscopy. So what's your tips and the tricks in dealing with stone in the lower calyx in situ fragmentation or relocation? If you can give us uh, some of your experience, it will be nice. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, so uh, there, there, are, there is one picture. Uh, so uh, the position, if the stone in lower calyces and uh, very hard stone, I will choose crown with separate light technique. So first, I will insert, of course, accessories, and then a few eyes, and then if I can reach, okay, use laser for smash. And if I can't reach, I will puncture immediately without change of the position. If I can reach and I can move the stone from lower calyces to upper or middle, that's okay. Just use a few eyes. If I can't reach and I can't move, also the stone is very hard and uh, the, 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 the laser is, um, how to say, no effect. I will also choose puncture immediately. So usually you are ready for lower yes. calyceal stone with a puncture. Yes, yes. Uh, it, uh, so this is my habit. I will prepare everything. Good. Okay, perfect. Uh, actually, the question is a lot, and the uh, discussion with you is very interesting, and uh, we cannot uh, stop ourselves, but uh, due to time limit, uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you very much. And uh, we need to move to uh, uh, the next uh, uh, presentation. Uh, uh, so thank you very much. Our uh, next talk will be uh, one moment. So the next talk will be about the flexible ultroscopy. Uh, uh, doctor, uh, the single use ultroscopy uh, and the advantages and we will listen from one of uh, his uh, very close friend and I know him very well. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Al-Ghannam, he is very well known, famous right. Indo urologist in the Middle East. He is uh, a consultant urologist and he is colonial. Uh, working in Kuwait. Uh, he is the head of urology unit uh, of Armed Force Hospital in Kuwait and a visiting consultant in, in Jabir Al Ahmed Hospital in Kuwait. Uh, he has a very long experience in the Indo urology and the flexible ultroscopy and uh, using both uh, single use and reusable and I think we will get a lot of information to share with him his experience about the difference between the two scopes, what are the advantages that we have in the last few years with developing the single use uh, scope. Uh, welcome with me uh, Dr. Muhammad and uh, Dr. Muhammad the screen is yours, you can uh, share your screen, welcome. Thank you Dr. Yasser. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, my colleagues in China. Good afternoon, my colleagues in Kuwait and United Arab Emirates. It's a great pleasure and honor to be today with you talking about uh, the advantages of flexible URS from point which is not talking a lot about the cost, the cross infection, and the availability. So we hope we will find this uh, presentation is useful and fine. We will share the screen. So, in the introduction, the miniaturization of endurological instruments and improvement of lithotripsy laser revolution, the approach of arena and uretic stone. Flexible electroscopy has become an important tool in the urologist. As we are urologists, we have a big experience in the <clears throat> reusable one. 
But the new one now is coming, which is the disposable one. Until recently, reusable electroscope were the only available perform of electroscope. Uh, the flexible URS is increasingly used as a first line treatment. And this is not surprising. I can say this is frankly in my hospital in Kuwait, the private and the governmental hospital, we use a lot of cases with the flexible URS. Honestly, either reusable or disposable. And this is depends on many factors. For example, if I give it to the one who is junior or a big stones in the lower calyx, I prefer always to start with the flexible disposable one. And we will show you why. Flexible URS has become popular with urologists as it is associated with high free rates and acceptable to all patients. So in the initial purchase, cost of the reusable flexible URS instruments combined and cleaning is significant. The instruments, uh, these instruments are delicate, as we know, and can be damaged easily. And the cost of repair can be substantial. There is also the recognized issue of scope degradation over the time. So after using it, maybe after 10 cases or 15 cases, the angulation upward and downward can be affected. And this affects the, the efficacy of the operation itself. And as we know, it has a prolonged learning curve. It is these issues that is limiting the use and uptake of flexible URS in some countries. So in the recent years, single use of flexible and semi-rigid retroscope have been developed as an alternative to reusable retroscope. These disposable retroscopes were designed to mitigate the problems associated with the use of reusable retroscope, including high costs related to retroscope acquisition, maintenance, processing, sterilization, and repairs. So the objective is the presentation to evaluate the new single use of the flexible URS scope and assess it could be an alternative to reusable. To outline the advantage of the single flexible instruments, that will eliminate the inconsistent performance of reusable instruments while also avoiding the expensive reprocessing and repair cost. Uh, this is the timeline of the single use of flexible URS. If you see here, the little view, which is launched uh, in January 2016 by Boston Scientific, then later on comes the one which is Euroscope UE3011 from Pusin. Then come another one launched by May on May 2016, Neoflex and Neoscopes. End of the 2016 launched other one which is Chaogang also. And by 2017, the new model from the POSIN UE3022 is launched. This is are the different types of the flexible URS. First of things, uh, polyscope from Luminous. This was the first described in the literature in 2010. Semiflexiscope in the States, the first generation of the semi disposable. It was not completely disposable, it was only semi-disposable flexible ERS. Then comes the flexor view from the cook, but it is 16 French with the handle and deflection mobile piece. Came later, as I mentioned before, the one from Boston Scientific, the one from Newscope, and the one from the Poulsen. This study, uh, published by the Journal of Indoeurology in 2000. 19 February, and it showed the imaging. We found that polyscope and the semiflex, the flexor view is from the fiber optic. Lithview, view, scope, and new flex are digital. The shaft varies between 8, 8.3 French, and the U scope is around nine. The working channel range between 3.6, 3.5. The U scope is 3.6. The deflection of the scope itself, 180 degrees single sides, 270 bidirectional, and 175 bidirectional in the U scope. And the handling will find this is almost regular except the U scope, which is horizontal like joysticks. 
So what are the factors considered? The specification, the flexion and deflection, irrigation, the flow rates, the field of vision, sterilization, reprocessing time, cost analysis, and scope damage. For the flu uh, fluoroscope, for the flexible ERS scope assessment, as we mentioned, the specification, the deflection, deflection. If we look here, this is a study published by the Journal of Indoeurology in February 2019, showed that the, the outer diameter or the tip of the flexible URS, the disposable one from little view was 9.5, the U-scope 9.5 also. The new flex is around nine French and the chow gang is eight. The working channel where we insert the, either the guide wire, the laser, or the basket itself, it is almost the same, 3.6 in little view, use scopes and new flex, chow gang a little bit higher. The deflection, almost the same, 270 for all of them. The image technology, the CMOS, which is complementary metal oxide semiconductor, Illumination, all are LED except the U scope, which is optical fiber. The light source allocations are all handy. This is an in vitro comparison for the stores, Pusin and Postin Scientific, and this is published by the Indoeurology Journal of Indoeurology, the same one, February 2019, and the deflection of the flexible urethroscope almost the same by the flexible URS disposable and the reusable. If we go for the flexion and deflection, if we see the Del et al, the little view and the flex X, the comparison was done, it was 276 and 263. If we go for the Tom et al, a comparison done between the little view, which is 276, New Flex 226, Chow Gang 339, and the Flex X 263. If we go for the Scotland et al, the comparison done between Little View, U Scope, and Flex X, it is 295, 290, and 285. We can see the comparison is almost equal. There is no big variation between the flexible URS disposable and the reusable one. If we look for the irrigation, in case of empty channel, Marcini et al. showed that 42 ml per minute, for U scope, it is 52 ml per minute. And if we go, for example, for the Dale et al., it shows the little view 40 ml, and Tom et al. showed 40 ml new flex and Chow Gang 59. In case if we use 200 micrometer for the laser fiber, of course, the irrigation rate will be affected. So it is 21 ml per minute by little view and use scope, 22 by little view by uh, Dale et al. And by Tom et al. showed it is 16 and 28, 7. If we use the 365, the irrigation will be reduced also. We found that by Marcini et al, 7 ml in both U scope and little view. If we use 1.3 basket, it is 18 ml of U scope and little view. And if we use the bigger one, 1.9, it will be subsided to 7 ml by little view, 3.5 by U scope. This is an assessment for the field of vision. If we check the del et al, is 15.75 by little view. Flex X is 10.5. If we look for the Tom et al, the comparison was between little view 15.75, new flex 13.8, Chow Gang is 14, and Flex X is 10.5. If we go for the Dragos, there is a comparison between little view 15.5, U scope 9.5, new flex 11. Chow Gang 9.5 and the Flex X is 10.5. This assessment is also published by the Journal of Indoeurology in 2019, February. 
So, as I know, let's uh, take these questions. In uh, our practice, in case of post-URS, UTI, consider it the cross-infection. Honestly, yes, because cleaning is and decontamination of the infection, this is belong to the other department, which is the SSPD. So I'm worrying about it. This is the factors of uh, considered sterilization and infection. And this is published by the Outpatient Surgery Magazine in March 2017. And the conclusion was a highly skilled workforce is needed to sterilize and reprocess the increasing number of complicated instruments used in the healthcare environment. In some hospitals, sterile processing departments are viewed by hospital executive as cost center. If the goal is to cut costs, sterile processing personnel will not have the resources they need. This is a study by the American Journal of Infection Control published in March 2017, and the conclusion, flexible electroscope reprocessing methods were insufficient and may have introduced contamination. So what do you think about the re-sterilization processing? In case if I did now one flexible URS by reusable one, and there is another case schedule. How many minutes do we need? You will not be surprised that we need at least between 60 minutes to 120 minutes. So for sterilized processing department, if we use it, we can eliminate around two hours scope reprocessing cycle, minimize the stuff exposure to the harmful cleaning chemicals, minimize, eliminate the weekend evening coverage concerns, eliminate the sterilized, sterilization Sterilization uh, department, the SPD, staff being blamed for scope breakage and missing pieces, eliminate infection sterility risk on challenging device to clean. One, one less complex instrument you have to clean, track the end process and free up of the SPD resources. This is the steps in the processing. As I mentioned before, it takes around between 90 to 150 minutes till we get sterilization of the scope. Let's start from here. In case complete, we have to transport the scope, pre-cleaning the scope, leakage testing, and then cleaning, and then rinsing, disinfection, and then again rinsing, drying, and transport store. If we want to start the new case, we have to find the scope, pull the scope, extern it, and unwrap the for inspect. If it is broken, we have to look for the available backup. If there is no backup scope, unfortunately, we have to reschedule the case. And this is all wasting of time. Wasting of time meaning wasting of money. So in our in your clinical practice, what is the average number of cases before the first repair of flexible ORS? Uh, actually, it's a very important question, and I think it differs from practice, uh, from center to center, hospital to hospital. So if participant can share with us uh, their practice, what's uh, in their center, if they have some figures, uh, so I got some answer about that. It is 15 to 20 in, from two of our participants. Uh, so let me to ask uh, Dr. Lee, mm -hmm. what do you think? How many cases in average? I know you have thousands of cases, but <laughs> if you have in mind that uh, the average before the first repair, how many cases? Uh in, in okay. expert hand. Yeah, it depends on uh, optical or digital. Okay. With optical scopes, if the scopes is used by every doctor, okay. not a certain doctor, you may center 20 times. So okay. if digital, and if used with everybody, uh, 50 times. 
But oh. if only one surgeon use yeah. the special scope, uh, normally the optical will last last for fifty times, and the uh, the digital may last for one hundred times. Okay, but that's uh, maximum. Ma ma yeah. maximum. We'll back to Dr. Muhammad. In in your hospital, do you have statistics about the the this point? Uh, the governmental hospital, honestly, I'm the, uh, I'm the only with one of my senior doing the flexible ERS. So honestly, because it is only for me and for him. So we have like 20 to 25 cases. But in other hospitals where I have been trained before, because we were residents, so honestly, it is around 10 to 15. We have to be patient with the resident. This is how we learn, honestly. Yeah. So even if the scope is damaged during residency, it, it, this can happen. This is the advantage of the disposable one. You don't worry about, about it. You can give it to your resident and start to do it. And at the end, you have to throw it in the trash. Yeah. Let me to, sorry for interruption, but you need to highlight this point. In educational hospitals or university hospitals, the single-use urethroscopy is really solving a big problem to our young resident and young urologist because yes. with the reusable one, it's difficult to, to, to give a chance for all residents to, to, to gain skills and to improve their uh, uh, practice. So in presence of single-use, I believe it helped a lot the, the young urologist, the residents, to, 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 to be familiar with the scope, to be familiar with the technique. And this is one of the reasons why flexible urethroscopy is taking, I will not say replacing BCNL or other modalities, but it taking a big share in the uh, armamentarium of stone management. And yes. we expecting even the, the guidelines, it may be uh, changing in the, in the upcoming few years in the favor of flexible uh, in comparison to other uh, models. Sorry for interruption, let's to go on again with your presentation. So the reprocessing time in disposable flexible device, steps we start the new case, as we mentioned, pull scope and transport to the OR, unwrap and inspect successful case. The advantage, we eliminating all the previous processing, eliminate the waste of the time, resources and pain of reprocessing. So in case of the flexible ERS, which is disposable, the new case, transport, inspect. If it is broken for any reason, there is always available backup, success the case, and then we put it in the trash. So the reprocessing time is from zero to five minutes. The previous one was between 90 to 150 minutes. Factors considered repair cost analysis. An analysis of consecutive flexible ERS over a 13-month period was performed. The start of this latest coincided with the acquisition of seven new reusable scopes. Only procedures that involved laser lithotripsy of renal stone were included in the analysis. Data extracted include patients' characteristic age, sex, stone details, size, size, number, position, and collecting system, stag horn or partial stag horn stone. Operative detail and scope damage. All instruments were sterilized using the STIRIS system 1E. This study published by the British Journal Urology 2018. So the repair cost analysis, total procedure done 234. Number of repairs, 15. Number of cases until the first damage, the average was 11. Number of cases till second damage was 19 cases. Procedure damage ratio, 16.3. Repair cost, $162,000. And the cost per case, roughly $700. But we have to be worried that this $700 does not include the initial purchase cost, processing cost, cleaning, and other indirect costs such as transport, staff time used, and arranging service and repair. So the actual cost per case is higher than $700. If we look for the flexible one, which is disposable, 
and the single-use disposable scope is priced around $1,200, then the cost of 28 procedures will be around $35,000. This would represent a considerable cost saving and suggest that switching to the single-use scope would make sense from an economic point of view. This is only from the economy. Uh, this complicated uh, gram showed that in case of damage of the flexible URS, which is the reusable one, in case of scope repair needed, give it to the nurse, providing scope to the SPD for cleaning, SPD provides scope to the biomed, and the biomed will make the paperwork, purchasing for the PO, biomed again, shipping the scopes, and shipping receive since the scopes for the service, the biomed, and the person communicates back and forth with the vendor on the cost repair. The vendor provides agree upon the scope repair. So this is a long, long circuit. It took around 18 steps, six functions, and one vendor. So the similar compa uh, compatible, uh, the carbon footprint, is in flexible retroscope, a comprehensive study on the environmental impact of reusable and single-use retroscope. The conclusion was the environmental impact of the reusable flexible retroscope and the single-use flexible retroscope are comparable. And this is published by the Journal of Indo Urology 2018. And this is for the efficiency. This is published by the World Journal of Indiology, the Single-Use Flexible Retroscopy Systemic Review. The conclusion, single-use flexible URS demonstrate comparable efficacy with reusable flexible URS in treating renal calculi. So the final advantage and the key points of this presentation for the nurses, guaranteed scope available, ease of set up in all rooms, no burdensome setup and non-standard room, eliminates handling concerns and pulling incorrect scope or finding missing parts. For the physician, rapid and simple setup for quick transition during case, optimally performing scopes for every case, no concerns about pushing scopes too hard, damaging while trying to complete cases, eliminate risk and stress damaging of the scope, in case of the purchase and the material management, <clears throat> able of accurately budget flexible URS, avoid large capital purchase, avoid costly repairs, reduced administrative requirement on flexible URS program. And for the patient, or the most important, new scope every case. There is no chance for trans infection at all. No scope related risk of infection, physician operates with optimally performing scope. Conclusion, the development of single use flexible retroscope is a major technological advancement in the field of endourology. As we use now single use basket, single use guide wire, single use access sheet, why we didn't go for the single use scope? Initial studies indicate that these eritroscopes may be viable and cost-effective alternative to reusable flexible eritroscopes. The efficiency and carbon footprint are comparable. The main advantage of single-use scope is that it will have no maintenance or repair cost. Depending on the purchase cost, it may be more economical to use a single-use scope than purchasing and maintaining reusable scope. Urologists may wish to use single-use scope for cases in which reusable scope damage may occur, such as in lower pool, stag hornstones, training our colleagues, our residents, shortening the training curve, continued innovation and healthy competition in this field will lead to the improved devices that are more cost effective. And this is for the uh, post in itself, that if we talk about the environmental impact, it is 39% less of the material, 25% less of the using of the plastic, and 32% less on the volume package. Thank you. Uh, 
thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, it's really informative and uh, uh, precise and to the target. And uh, really, it's very clear regarding to the uh, cost, the processing, uh, and the cross infection. Uh, let me to ask from your experience. Uh, the ergonomics, do you notice any difference in ergonomics regarding to the weight or difficulty of handling uh, reusable from single use? Honestly, almost the same for me. Yeah, you don't feel that it is, this one is lighter than the other? A uh, little bit lighter, but uh, it's not that big difference. The only big difference for me, honestly, when I work with a difficult case like in the lower pool or staghorn, I work with more ease and release of the stress. Because oh. honestly, when the damage of the scope, and it happens with me, it takes oh. a lot of processing. It will take even few weeks or even months till I get the repair of the old one. But when I, I use this, the disposable one, this is stress and uh, about uh, damaging of the scope, it will be eliminated. Because I know that after this case, this scope will be in the trash. Okay, so thank you again, questions and answer from uh, our participants, either in the chat room. But I received a lot of questions. I'm trying to pick up some, and good that we have both of our guest speaker are here. Uh, maybe Dr. Lee, we have a, 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 an important question that uh, what, uh, or how can you manage if uh, dormia basket has been impacted while you are uh, manipulating a stone in the lower calyx? How you manage this situation? Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, if you're trying to have a stone in the yeah. lower calyx with yeah. a dormia basket, and the dormia basket, it's uh, not, uh, you cannot move it, you cannot disimpact the dormia, or you cannot ha handle it. Yeah, uh, it means if the basket is uh, stuck by the stone, I, yes. I, I, I can't release the basket. Okay. <laughs> uh, if difficult to release, any other options yes, that know. you can do? That's a bit very tough situation. Uh, yeah. Actually, I never faced such such thing. Uh, but I, I think I think the the last step for release the basket. If you really can't release the basket by the inside of the pelvis or the ureters. Maybe you can choose later. This is the final step. Yeah. Uh, to break one wire, just one wire. Uh, some basket has three, some four wires. Just break one wire. And then you can um, pull back the basket. Of course, nothing will last because yeah. you only break one wire. Okay. Uh, do you think do you think you can disassemble the handle of the uh, dormia and you can go out with the scope and go again beside the dormia and try to 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 fragment or to manipulate the stone mm, i I never tried this before but 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 maybe next time I will try like this <laughs> that's great uh, I will ask both of you about the, uh, you know that uh, there is no strong evidence about the uh, cross infection, but uh, what we faced in the last few months during the COVID-19 that uh, many hospitals got uh, panicked, so the pushing toward the single use uh, uh, strongly to avoid the cross infection. Uh, in China or in Kuwait, do you have any uh, information about the virus or COVID-19 cross-infection with the schools? No. 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 Okay. Because you know um, in China, we will, we, will, we will check the, each patient carefully. And we will scan the lens. And uh, also we will check the virus. Uh, and uh, we will ask, ask the patient where he has been and uh, if, if he has uh, connected with any patient before. So no, 
always patients come to my work till now. So we don't have the experience for okay. treating of the COVID patient. Yeah, we don't know what uh, the, the data will come in the future. We don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, there are another question that, uh, do you think that flexible uh, single use URS may become the gold choice of renal stone? or flexible urethroscopy in general? Uh, Mahama? Uh, I think it's difficult to say the golden choice because you know it's variable based on multiple criteria, stone size, stone location, multiplicity, anatomy. So as I mentioned in the beginning, yes, flexible urethroscopy, especially after having the single use it increased uh, the, the, the role of uh, URS in, in the uh, stone management in general. But uh, I think it's difficult to, to say the gold standard or the golden choice for renal stones. It's not an easy to say. Yes? Yeah, I think that we have to have all the tools. When you go to the battle, you have to have all the tools. You have to know yeah. how to use your flexible, either reusable or flexi or the disposable. You have the tools that to convert it to the PCNL in case if you cannot. So we have to prepare ourselves correctly with our tools before the operation itself. This is the advice. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, one uh, question, uh, as it's not clear, but I'm mostly asking about do you recommend the daily uh, operation model for flexible URS? Uh, especially to some younger guys. So it means I you think, think- like the, a day case? Uh, no, I think this is a, a operation model. Uh, it means something for training, for models or something like that. Uh, this is one of the questions. So uh, let me to rephrase it. Do you think that Prax with the renal model uh, can help to improve the, 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 the experience and skills? If you have I, a, I, don't think, I don't think. You don't think. So uh, having uh, training on uh, um, models like kidney models, uh, this will help that young urologist or resident to be more familiar with the scope, familiar how to handle, how to manipulate. This can shorten their uh, uh, Clinical. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. No? I don't think so. You don't think so? You wanted to start immediately in a patient? Actually, um, they will uh, practice from cystoscope first and then read a urethoscope and then flex for urethoscope. I, I think. Uh, from easy to difficult. But I don't think uh, the simulator is yeah. better for training. Uh, because the simulator is a fixed model. But uh, for each patient, the structure is totally different. Yeah. So I think the answer of both of you, uh, Dr. Muhammad, supporting that, and you say that it will not add benefits. I think uh, uh, in the learning curve, there are two phases. If you need the, your resident to be familiar with the scope itself, how to do the deflection, how to uh, make uh, uh, orientation, how the flexion of the tip will go when he moves his thumb, and uh, how he can move slowly or he can move rapidly. So I think basic skills should be in a model. It can be helpful. But when it comes, yes, as you said, Dr. Lee, that anatomy is different from patient to patient. And even if after hundreds of cases, you can face a strange situation or a difficult situation, and you need to manipulate in a different way. So having both to work in a models for basic is important. To work in, in a patient under supervision from your senior is also, it's very important to, to, to get his guidance and his experience to help you uh, to improve your learning curve. Uh, I think uh, we exceeded the allowed time, and I know that time in China is we are uh, 
almost late now. Still, we are in Dubai. We are in the early evening, but uh, you may have uh, late evening now in China. And I think tomorrow is a working day, which is the first day of the week. Uh, so uh, I'd like not to take more time, although I have a lot of questions in the chat box and have a lot of questions uh, from the participant. I apologize for those who are not able to answer their questions, but uh, I believe this will not be the, the, the last uh, time to meet. I believe that Cousin is planning to have a chain or a series of uh, webinars that we consider this is the first one or part one. And I hope that uh, in, in upcoming uh, webinars or uh, hopefully maybe soon we can have some physical meetings, maybe uh, in a couple of months. Uh, so uh, I want to close now. And uh, again, I appreciate and really, I personally, I learned a lot from our two uh, guest speakers, both Dr. Muhammad and Dr. Lee. Uh, it was very interesting, very practical to the point. Uh, and thank you for all our participants for their active participation and sharing their opinions and their uh, experience. And I, I, I again and again thank you for posing, for allowing the chance for international experience exchange between, because you know, everyone working in his locality, he feels that he's doing everything in, in a good way. But when I am listening to someone else, I may find something is better and I can learn, and I can add to my experience. So it's really a, a great, great opportunity for everyone to listen to different speakers from different areas in the world to improve his skills and his experience. Thank you, Pozen. Thank you, Professor Lee. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. And hopefully you enjoyed and have a good night and see you soon. Thank you. See you.